So, actually, one of my professors at graduate school in, at Caltech in America was Professor Hiro Kanamori, a famous guy in seismology. He was a full professor at Todai at the Earthquake Research Institute. And then he quit um, Todai and he moved to Caltech as a professor. So, because of my work with him at Caltech, I think that's why I was asked to become a permanent professor um, at this university. And then I was the first foreign citizen invited to become a permanent foreign professor, um, associate professor at that time, at Tōtai. So I thought it was a great honor. And so I was very happy to accept that position. So it'll be 27 years this August. Time flies, doesn't it? Earthquake science, seismology, involves two main sets of problems. One is earthquakes themselves. The second is the Earth's interior. For the last um, 15 or so years, I've worked mainly on um, Earth structure, finding out what's in the Earth. When, when we have an earthquake, the, the waves from the earthquake are recorded by seismographs. And a seismograph registers not only the time that the, the initial wave arrives, but we have a whole bunch of wiggles after the initial arrival, the very complicated motion of the Earth. And we can compare the theoretical waveforms to the observed ones. And they, they match reasonably well, but not perfectly. And then we can tune the Earth model so that the observed and theoretical waveforms better match by Improving the fit of the theory and the data, we get a better Earth model, and so we can tell how the velocities vary from place to place in the Earth. And also we can measure parameters like anelastic attenuation, how the waves are absorbed by the Earth, and anisotropy. So we, we can, using waveform inversion, using methods which were developed by our research group, and, and where we're leading um, in this field at the moment. Actually, after that earthquake, not only myself, but many researchers in Japan, at least for the time being, we stopped what we were working on and, and worked on a whole variety of problems related to um, the March 11th quake. Many people in many countries, including Japan, have made many efforts to try to predict earthquakes. Now, unfortunately, these efforts have all been unsuccessful. And perhaps the reason is that earthquakes are not predictable. Th this is my personal opinion. But I think everyone should agree that if people want to do research on earthquake prediction, it should be at a very high academic level. So one month after the March 11th quake, I published an article in Nature so here's the figure. What this shows that the areas in red were um, predicted by a long-term earthquake forecast of the Japanese government to be very dangerous, um, very subject to the risk of a great earthquake. On the other hand, the place where the March 11th earthquake actually occurred was um, predicted by the long-term forecasting of the Japanese government to have a very low level of seismic risk. So the reason for this discrepancy is not a computational error or something like that. In my opinion, and, and this is something I personally said before March 11, the methods being used by the Japanese government agency to make these maps are fundamentally incorrect. In other words, they're based on a, a paradigm where the earthquakes repeat cyclically. At, at regular intervals. And in my opinion, that's not how earthquakes occur. We need a new paradigm of how earthquakes occur. So I think this is a real chance in the field of seismology, that um, for young people going into any scientific field, just like relativity or 
quantum mechanics in physics a hundred years ago. I think five or ten years we're, we're going to have some new paradigm of earthquake occurrence. And young students from either Japan or foreign countries want to work in this area. I, I think this is one really good topic for research. And I hope you want to come to Tokyo University.